there is the electrical substation. You see the water all around it. Uh, five rivers uh, converge in Sheffield. There were real concerns, and there still are, about the safety of the city's electricity supply. What we can never know is how bad this could have been. I'm convinced that we made a huge difference to the ability of those two cities, Hull and Sheffield, to, to cope with this. We defended some sites that, that were in flooded regions that themselves weren't damaged. Had they been taken out, we, we can only guess how difficult it would have been for us to put it back. Well, at the height of the flood here, the water would have been up to my shoulders. The windows you can see behind me are where we saw people clinging to save themselves from drowning. In fact, I was trying to scale the event with the guys on the conference call on the evening um, to give them some understanding of what was happening down in Sheffield, people trapped in buildings, the three seeking helicopters working to rescue people. I would say by Monday night, we, are, we were under no illusion that this was going to be a long haul. The Uli Reservoir lies to the southeast of Sheffield, a Victorian dam covering an area of 35 acres. In its path, a huge power station. Part of its bank has collapsed in the gushing waters, and as a precaution, the nearby M1 had to be closed in both directions. We've had to replace eight of the substations, which were almost completely submerged by the floods. It was an ever-changing environment as well. So when we did set off to actually do repairs, by the time we got there, if the floodwaters had risen sort of thing, we were then I had problems and had to retreat in some instances and reprioritise and send them elsewhere. Well, on National Grid, there were several of our sites that were under threat of flooding, but there was only actually Neeb's End when we lost both grid transformers feeding the city of Sheffield. Not only that, some of the, the primary substations that were fed from the Neeb's End grid supply point had also suffered either faults or flooding themselves. 48,000 customers there, yeah. I think, on, on Neeps End, all mm. went off at once when we lost the National Grid in feed, and our system just isn't designed to pick up 48,000 customers in one go. And the control centre building at Gelded Road in Leeds, we were getting reports that that building was starting to flood itself. It was clear we had to get those guys out of there. The thing was functioning, we never had a, a moment where the thing didn't function but uh, we knew that we'd got low voltage wiring of some of the IT equipment underwater downstairs. And we had to get our folks out of there and, and commission the standby uh, facility, which is only a few miles around the, the ring road in Leeds, but we knew it was gridlocked. And this is why the Army are providing the boat service. It's Thorpmarsh substation. Keeping it online is vital for guaranteeing electricity supplies to South Yorkshire and beyond. People were already looking for a solution before the problem had really been fully defined. You know, th that's how keen people were to work it out and make sure it happened. 76,000 people were left without power when the floods actually struck, first of all. Now that number has been dramatically reduced. The staff were coming in before their shifts in staying well into the night for their shifts. We had no issues about getting the staff to stay at all. And we had fantastic cooperation with CE Electric in that a couple of commissioning engineers were working alongside ours. On reflection, I don't think I could be more proud of, of the achievement of, of our folks and I hope they feel the same way. This event has cost us, in terms of investment in the network, just over £6 million. Now that is everything, all the operating costs and the capital costs. But clearly, investment of that order is a significant amount of money, so that gives you some kind of feel for the amount of damage that was done by this flood. We've had to replace, of the order of 60 substations, where we've had to replace the equipment. We aimed to be part of people's solution rather than yet another problem for them to have to worry about in the week after as they were able to get back into their businesses and into their homes. And our aim was, by Sunday, to be in a position where anyone who was ready could get a supply from us, and in the vast majority of cases, we succeeded in being able to do that. I don't think we ought to underestimate the fact that a significant number of our preparations and investment in flood defences, for example, in previous years, saved two or three sites in and around the Sheffield region. And had we lost those as well, I haven't done the sums and now there's anybody else to my knowledge to work out how much more difficult the challenge would have been. But suffice it to say, it would have been certainly more difficult and maybe even it would have rendered some of the solutions that we did deploy impossible. So in that sense, we've got to reflect extremely positively on having been part of, as I say, part of the solution to the problem, if you like, rather than having exacerbated it, I like to think. Last night, the, the results RAF of some of the worst flooding in the of their lives is we vital to guaranteeing electricity supplies to South Yorkshire and beyond.